In this lesson, we are going to cover the factor form of a quadratic function. Now, most of this will be reviewed from grade 10, but we'll just uh, go over it very quickly. Um, there are three different forms to represent a quadratic function. So uh, when we write the equation, it could be in vertex form, it could be in standard form, or it could be in factored form. Now, why do we have three different forms? Because each form gives us something special, okay? The vertex form gives us the vertex. And I can argue that the vertex is the most important point on the parabola. What else does it give us? Gives us transformations. And we're gonna talk about transformations in the next unit, but uh, hopefully you remember from last year, gives us transformations applied to uh, g of x equals x squared to obtain f of x equals a times x minus h on all squared plus k. Okay, what else could it give us? Direction of opening. All right, so you can also say it tells you whether the vertex of max or min, but I link that with direction of opening. Uh, you can say optimal value. There's more it can give us, but I know what, I, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, standard form, what does it really give you? The y-intercept, which unfortunately is uh, not a very valuable piece of information. Um, and you can easily find it even if you don't have it. So that is a reason why standard form, I would argue, is third place uh, when it's uh, ranked compared to vertex form and factored form. All right, what else does it give you? It gives you direction of opening. Okay, all I have to see is, is whether A is positive or negative. And then lastly, factored form. Factor form gives me the zeros, which are R and S. And just like before, it gives you the direction of opening. All right. So, like I said, we are going to focus on the factored form. So, unfortunately, well, these are not in uh, uh, factor form. They're in standard form. So, I want to find the zeros. And the best way to do it is to change it into factored form. So uh, before I do that, I just want to, uh, I want you to remember what zeros mean. Zeros mean uh, values of x which make the function equal to zero. So what values of x will make the function f of x equal to zero? Well, I can't possibly tell you right now. Uh, I can't tell when x squared minus 3x minus 18 is equal to zero. But what I can do is I'm going to factor And now that I have a factor, I can apply the zero product property because if either of these factors are equal to zero, then the product will be zero. So when is x plus six equal to zero? When x is equal to six. When is x plus three equal to zero? When x is equal to negative three. So guess what? The zeros, when will f of x be zero? When x is equal to six or negative three so zeros are six and negative three okay all right let's try this one g of x once again that g of x equals zero and now let's uh factor this or we can use the quadratic formula uh, but I'm going to factor. So this is a complex trinomial. I don't know if you remember how to factor this. Um, but if you don't, uh, you have to watch the videos on uh, factoring by, uh, well, factoring complex trinomials. Um, here we go. So 3x, x, I'm going to put the 3 here, the 1 here, negative 3, negative 1. This will make me negative 9x, negative 1x, and all together, negative 10. Okay, set each factor equal to zero because you want to apply the zero product property. When is 3x minus one zero? Uh, usually I just write the zeros down. Once I have a factor, I don't need students to show me the work. 
but some students have a really hard time extracting the zero. So I'll write it out for you. 3x minus 1 equals 0, or x minus 3 equals 0. The zero product property. So you have your zeros, one third and three. Okay, so if you're given the zeros, let's say you're just given the zeros, okay? What you actually have is a family of quadratic functions, okay? What does it mean to be a family of quadratic functions? Let's just read this little paragraph here. Sometimes you're given the zeros of a quadratic function and are asked to, to develop an equation which represents the set of all the quadratic functions with the same zeros. Okay, so let's think about this graphically. If I gave you the zeros, okay, let's say they're of course real zeros, what you have are the x-intercepts of the corresponding parabola. Now there are infinite number of parabolas you can draw that have those x-intercepts. So that's why it's called a family of quadratic functions. So if you have a pair of quadratic functions which have the same zeros, then they're part of the same family. Okay, so let's write the equation which represents the family of quadratic functions with the zeros of negative 4 and 1 half. Okay, so f of x equals, I'm going to use a, as, as a changes, you're going to have different uh, members of the family, okay? Different equations are part of that family of quadratic functions. So the zeros are x and uh, negative 4, so x plus 4 is a factor. And if half is a zero, then 2x minus 1 is a factor. Now, we have to set a restriction on a. a could be any real number you want. But don't let it equal to b0, because then you don't have a quadratic function. Okay, so this equation represents an infinite number of quadratic functions. Okay, an infinite number of quadratic functions which have the same zeros. Now, I can go from the family of quadratic function to a particular member of that family. How do I do that? I need a point. Okay, so let's do g of x. So g of x represents the equation for that particular member of the family, whereas f of x represents the equation for the the, uh, the for the, the family of quadratic functions. So for the member of the family, let's find out what a is. So this is g of 8 is 5. So that's going to be 32 and 16, right? Sorry, 32 and 15. Oh, 12. Oh my gosh. 12 and 15. So that's 3 and 3. So therefore, the equation of the member equation of the member let's do family member equation of the family member is g of x equals 1 over 36 x plus 4 and 2x minus 1. Okay, so this is the equation that represents the family of quadratic functions and this is a particular member of this family. All right. Find the equation with zeros of negative 3 plus or minus root 5 and it passes through negative 2, 3. Now I forgot to mention that what we're going to do is we're going to find the equation in standard form. I don't know why, but the textbook loves to ask the students to put the equation in standard form. Um, I think it's to help them uh, practice the algebraic skills, as you'll see when we do the example. But um, yeah, you can leave it in factor form if I didn't state it, but now that I have, we're going to change it to standard form. Okay, so what we're going to do, though, we're going to start off with factor form. So f of x equal a x minus r x minus s. So the zeros are negative 3 plus root 5. 
Okay, x minus or x minus s the other zero, which is negative three minus root five. Okay, let's clean that up a little. Okay, let's solve for a, because right now we basically have the equation for the family, but since I have a point, uh, I can sub it in and solve for a. So f of negative 2 negative 2 plus 3 plus root 5. So what's f of negative 2? 3. And something beautiful happens. You have 1 minus root 5, 1 plus root 5. That's a difference of squares. a minus b, a plus b, which is a squared minus b squared. So it's 1 minus 5, which is negative 4. Uh, so this is going to be negative 3 quarters. Oh, whoops, x plus 3 minus root 5. Okay, so like I said, standard form, so I'm going to do all this expansion. Now the shortcut, you could do trinomial, trinomial, but the shortcut is to visualize the x plus 3 to get like it set that binomial in your head as a and root 5 is b. So really have a minus b times a plus b again, difference of squares, so it's a squared minus b squared. So it's different square, uh, perfect square trinomial. And then distribute the negative three quarters and we're golden. That's negative uh, six over four, three of two, so negative nine over nine over two x. And it's just negative three. Beautiful. Okay. Very common test question. Um, yeah. Just just be ready to expand. Now, if you didn't see this shortcut of using difference of squares. Then, then it's okay. Just, just do it the long way. Just do multiply, like do x times x, x times three, x times root five, and then three times x, three times three, three times root five, and so forth and so on. Um, but yeah, that's the shortcut to, to see the difference of squares pattern. Okay, let's keep going. So, uh, unfortunately, factor form does not give us the vertex of the parabola. Wait, why we want the vertex? There are multiple reasons, but one of them would be to graph the parabola. So just like last year in grade 10, you realize that the vertex was very, very useful when it comes to graphing the parabola. So how do you graph or how do you find the vertex from factored form? We know that all parabolas are symmetrical. Thus by averaging the zeros we can find the x coordinate of the vertex after we have the x coordinate of the vertex we can use the equation to solve for the y coordinates of the vertex. So that was entirely from grade nine. So graph the function. Okay, let's get the zeros, which in this case are negative four and two. What's the average of negative four and two? Negative one, f of negative one.
which is negative 9 over 2. Okay, so therefore, vertex is negative 1, negative 9 over 2. All right, let's plot that. 1, 1, the zeros are negative 4 and 2. What's the vertex? Negative 1, negative 9, and, negative 4 and a half. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and I know the a value is half, so the step pattern is, the first step is half. So that's why I go half there, and I got five beautiful points, and I can plot. I can graph that probably using five points. Five points is pretty good. Five points is pretty good for accuracy. All right. Uh, rewrite the equation of the relation in vertex form. So you know what? To write in vertex form, I need the vertex. So the zeros are negative four and half. Let's average them to find the x coordinate of the vertex. Negative seven over two over two, which is negative seven quarters. F of negative seven quarters. Let me just check for a second. Negative four, half. Uh, that's negative three and a half, which is negative seven or two. Yep, so far so good. Don't want to care this mistake here. Eighty one over sixteen. All right, so here's a vi the reason why I put this question on the like on, in this hand is because it's a very common mistake that students make. They write f of x equals negative half x plus 7 over 4 all squared plus 81 over 16. So it's a super common mistake, but it's not negative 1 half. They see negative 1 half here and they just copy it, but that's not the case. a is not negative 1 half. Now why is a not negative 1 half? Let's bring it back. Because you can only state a if it's 1x minus r times 1x minus s. It's only if the coefficient of x is 1. But it's not 1 over here, it's 2. So what you have to do is factor out the 2 so it is 1. And if you do is not negative half, but a is actually negative 1. Okay, so let's be careful of that because a lot of students make that mistake. So that's ugly negative, but it's negative one. Okay, there you go. So just a quick review of factor form, uh, but it, it's basically what you did in grade 10.